So in this lecture we will discuss propeller engines. The last time we looked at uh, different uh, engine types and we, we, uh, we focused already on air breathing engines. But when you have the energy generated by the engine on a, on a shaft, you have a certain uh, shaft power, then you need something to convert this into propulsive energy. And the task of the propeller is exactly that, to convert the, the power, the shaft power, into uh, energy which becomes available for the propulsion, the available propulsive energy. So to convert shaft energy into propulsive energy, that's where the, the propeller comes in. And the propeller is basically a little wing. And uh, there, there are different ways in which you, you do that. There, the, the, the propeller rotates, and of course this is in a way a waste of, of energy. This is a way to create extra airflow over the propeller elements. But in a part of the energy which goes into the in increase of speed of the air is wasted because we were not interested in creating rotating air. So that's why the counter-rotating uh, propeller is much more efficient as it uh, uses this rotation of the first propeller as extra energy in the second propeller, which is rotating in the other direction, or could even be standing still in a way to, uh, to use this energy which normally is, uh, is wasted. The, from the propeller blade point of view, the difference is of course the same. So let's have a, have a look at this, uh, this propeller blade. Um, there are different ways in, in which you can increase the efficiency of this propeller blade. For instance, you can make sure that uh, the, the air stays in the, in the sort of tube around the propeller by using a ducted fan. This is not done uh, a lot, there is not that much to gain from it. A, a, a principle which generates a lot of extra efficiency is to change the pitch angle of the propeller blade. Because if you have a fixed pitch, like here, the, the, the original older uh, propeller types, then of course there's it only is, uh, is working for one specific combination of rotation and airspeed. And if this varies, and, and they both do vary, if you want to always create an optimal flow, you can use a variable pitch. Well, how this works exactly is better viewed if we look at this one element of the propeller first. Let's look at, uh, at this propeller, and we see here one element at a certain distance from the center. This distance is called the radius r. And there is, next to the, the airspeed, of course, the propeller creates a rotational speed. And the absolute speed due to rotation is the angular speed, omega, times the radius. And omega needs to be expressed in radians per second for this formula to work. And then we get the, the absolute speed of the propeller, uh, the, and also the speed of the air around the propeller, due to the rotation. If there's no forward speed, this is the speed that this blade element experiences. And uh, because the propeller is basically a little wing, it creates a lift perpendicular to the surface of the propeller and drag, which is pointing backwards from the, from the element. And this, this lift of this little wing is what we call the thrust, because it points in the direction that we want our force, and that's called the thrust. And of course the drag is from the point of view of the, the propeller, it's the side force, and it's something that is uh, basically the cost that we have to pay to generate the thrust, to generate the lift. So you, in this diagram the, the thrust is pointed towards us and the side uh, force is pointing uh, backwards from the point of view from this blade element. Well, of course, this radius varies for different blade elements. And this also means that we might have to change our angle of attack slightly of, of each element. The speed due to rotation is linearly dependent of the radius of the blade element. And if we look at a point close to the center, then the rotation speed isn't very high. And basically it's more like a wing there, and so it's also more pointed more in the direction of the airflow. From the point of view of the propeller plane, it's the propeller surface, it's more angled towards the airspeed and has a large twist to create an optimal angle of attack for, for a good ratio of lift and drag, or in this case thrust and side force. If we look further down the blade, further away from the center, then of course the rotation, the absolute speed due to the rotation, increases with the radius. And this also means that the blade element needs to be pointed more towards the plane in which the propeller rotates. 
and that means it has a smaller twist uh, compared to the, the propeller plane in which we, uh, we look. So you see that depending on the radius, there is a different twist required, and that's why a propeller blade has a variable twist. It, it twists when it, you look at it away from the center to the, to the edge, to the outer side. Well, you see also here that the, the V0, the forward speed, the, the airspeed, is a component, a vector component in the total speed, and this varies. And of course, the rotation speed can also vary with rotation. And that's the reason that sometimes you want to change the propeller pitch to ensure an optimal uh, angle and to always have an optimal angle of attack to have your highest efficiency of the propeller. So that is the aerodynamic perspective, looking at the propeller blade as a, as a little wing and, uh, and how you can optimize that. If we now look more from an energy point of view at the propeller, let's have a look at the propeller power. The power, of course, being the work per second that's performed by this propeller. This is the, so the energy per time unit, work performed. So we have to look at one time step. So let's look at the airplane at one time t here. We have a certain thrust, which we keep constant for now. And then a little time step later, the plane has traveled a certain distance, and let's call this delta S for the way traveled. If we now want to know what the work is that has been performed by the thrust force, we simply multiply the force by the way traveled. In this case, that's the thrust force times delta S. So the work performed in this time step is thrust times delta S. And then we have the energy Newton meter. But for power, of course, we need to know the amount of work performed per time unit. So we divide by delta T, our time step. And then this gives us watt, which is joule per second. And this is the power that apparently is available for propulsion, the propulsive power, the power available for thrust. And this is called power available because the amount of energy that you have to put in by the engine is larger. And then after the propeller has done its work, this is what the power uh, available for the thrust for the propulsion is. So it's a propulsive power available. If we look closer at this equation, we see that it's also, you can also say, uh, apart from the work divided by the time, you can also say it's the thrust times time, uh, the weight traveled per time unit. So weight traveled per time unit, of course, is also known as speed. So apparently, and this is an important equation, the propulsive power, the powerful available, is thrust times airspeed, times the speed, or V0, so as we sometimes call it in this, uh, in this lecture, the airspeed of the, of the plane. So this is after the propeller has done its work, it is the, the net power available, PAT times V. Well, I already mentioned that this is not the same as the power that is generated by the engine after burning the fuel and going through this cycle of, of uh, compression and expansion. It uh, uh, delivers an amount of energy to the shaft, which we call the, the shaft power, which is higher than what we get out of our propulsion. It's you always, uh, both from transferring heat into work, you lose some energy, but again from uh, this shaft power into propulsive power, you lose something. And therefore we sometimes talk about the propulsive efficiency of a propeller, and there we simply divide the two. We divide the power available, uh, so T times V, by the brake, the shaft power, and this gives us our propulsive efficiency. So this is the energy view on how propellers work and how efficient they are after uh, working with this airflow around the blade elements, how they can transfer shaft power into propulsive power. But jet engines are in a way similar but they're also different. So in the next video clip, we'll have a look at how jet engines differ from the basic principles and how they use the basic principles, as we have explained them in the past few video clips.